Malice motion from the University of Sydney. I pay my respect to the traditional owners of the land on which the University of Sydney is built, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. There is no place in Australia, water, land or air, that has not been known, nurtured or loved by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Today as part of SITS IRS 21, I'm delighted to present to you on the topic of emerging citizen science learning and research communities in Australian higher education. This project has been very much a team effort uh, where we've shared the perspectives from academics across Australia who come from different disciplinary backgrounds but all believe in the importance um, and the important potential indeed of citizen science for both education and research and much more on our campuses. Universities, of course, play a central role in research in Australia and in countries around the world. And therefore, we believe it makes absolute sense for universities to have strong partnerships between people who are conducting research as citizen scientists. In 2018, Weiler and Hackley wrote a great paper integrating citizen science into universities. And one of the, the quotes from this paper that I'll read to you now uh, stated that the involvement of lay people challenges established ways of doing academic research as well as the self-image of universities and their role within society. And I think this is an important thing for us to consider, especially when we think about the structure of the universities and the key role of a university. So traditionally, we, we perhaps think about the universities as being uh, places of research, places of teaching or education, and places where uh, outreach happens. Sometimes in the, un in the university um, language, this is known as governance, leadership and engagement. And outreach is a form of engagement that breaks down the barriers between what's happening on campus and um, lets the community know uh, the important research and teaching that's being shared. And if we look at the intersection of these three areas, citizen science stands out as a very powerful way to link each of these three areas and to indeed involve people in research um, who aren't studying on our campuses. While we believe there to be many benefits in embedding citizen science in formal education and in our case particularly higher education, there are of course tensions, um, some of which have been neatly outlined by Klotzer et al and expanded on by Roche et al in two recent papers. And the four tensions that emerged from, from these papers were competing scientific and educational goals, different underlying ontologies and epistemologies, diverging communication strategies, and clashing values between advocacy and activism. For us, an inherent tension uh, relates to the blurred line between the roles of a citizen scientist as a student because of the inherent learning trajectories of a student while at university. So uh, for want of a better description, a student may start their degree as a novice and then throughout their higher education training uh, become an expert. We've therefore decided to select examples from campuses across Australia and map them to Hackley's model of participation. Hackley's typology of participation describes four levels of citizen science, starting with crowdsourcing, moving to level two of distributed intelligence, up to level three of participatory science, and then reaching level four of extreme citizen science. And what we've done is taken examples of projects that are happening on university campuses across Australia, not the same place, and mapped them to each of these levels to show the way that along with the learning trajectory of students, it might be possible to scaffold uh, students' participation as expanding from level one to level four throughout their university studies. As we're particularly interested in the way that citizen science can connect teaching, research and outreach, we're also considering um, the ways in which citizen science can increase the porosity of our campuses so that the knowledge that is created on campuses and in collaboration with the community can permeate uh, beyond, uh, beyond the walls of our campuses. So we're particularly looking at 
opportunities for community connections and distributed practice that can be built upon in each of these examples. Citizen science has been part of the first year chemistry laboratory at the University of Sydney since 2015, where students take part in breaking good and a challenge to synthesize novel anti-malarial compounds that are then tested as part of the open source malaria consortium. We had to rethink things in 2020 as due to COVID-19, students weren't able to be on campus. And so we thought what better way to inspire these students than to involve them in authentic research that was linked to COVID-19, the reason they couldn't be in the chemistry laboratory. And so they became part of the Foldit community. Foldit is a revolutionary crowdsourcing uh, computer game where participants are challenged to fold proteins. And in this case, they were folding protein structures that, um, that could potentially bind to the coronavirus spike protein. We found in common with Breaking Good, students participating in Foldit began at the level of crowdsourcing, but through um, you know, using their cognitive ability and their engagement in the assignments that were designed as part of this course, uh, they moved to the level of distributed intelligence um, and really enjoyed the challenge of being involved um, in authentic research and as part of a larger community. Across the campus at the University of Sydney, the Campus Flora project is one that has its roots in botany as a student project that started in 2012. And over the years, it has created shoots in other disciplines. It has seeded new opportunities for collaboration. And many of these have blossomed into new projects across science, the arts and engineering. It's centered around the Campus Flora app and the project uses plants as a waypoint to tell stories. In 2015, Campus Flora was expanded into the ecology curriculum when the team developed a climate watch trail in the app. And this um, in turn served as a tool that empowered ecology stu students to um, improve and, and reinforce their um, skills of plant identification and thereby strengthen their participation in climate watch. The creation process has drawn together those in different and diverse disciplines. For example, students and staff in ecology and music composition have collaborated and um, through a model of students as partners, um, there has been co-creation across engineering and biology and uh, has been used as a tool for outreach. And in a latest collaboration with engineering students and the university ICT team, um, they have built a, a mechanism for others to, to share their own botanical stories through the Our Flora project which enables other people to create their own incidents of the app and to share their own botanical narratives from other locations. Um, and now that it's a shareable app framework, um, Our Flora has really evolved into a citizen science project with communities at other institutions and has presented opportunities for extended collaborations with the public. And uh, this process is ongoing and it really is an example of of this porosity again um, between disciplines, between roles on campuses, between people who are students, academics, professional staff who've all participated and um, has now offered a system for others to adopt or extend this project beyond the grounds of the university. The co-creation present in Campus Flora and Our Flora for us means that it's a project at level three or participatory science because uh, the defining the problem has been done as part of the community and um, has involved um, the, the inputs of experts, scientists, um, ICT professionals, students and other members of the university community and beyond. According to Hackley's definition, extreme citizen science requires that scientists act as facilitators in addition to their roles as experts. And um, in this example from the University of New South Wales, uh, we think it's best that you hear from um, the person behind this project, uh, PhD student Casey Kershoff. 
Hello, my name is Casey Kirchhoff. I am a PhD candidate in the Centre for Ecosystem Science at UNSW and I'm studying alpine plant responses to climate change here in Australia. Uh, on the 4th of January 2020, my house burnt down in the Morton bushfire and it was after this happened that the Environment Recovery Project came to be. I wanted to monitor biodiversity return on my own property and after chatting with colleagues in the Centre for Ecosystem Science, we decided it needed to be a much larger citizen science initiative. Um, so the project hosted on the iNaturalist platform now has over 15,000 observations right across the fire grounds um, of over 2,500 different species. And so far, uh, one application of the data has been uh, ground truthing remote sensing imagery. So we were getting citizen scientists to fill out landscape burn metrics, um, and that was matching up really nicely with, with some of the heat signatures that we were seeing with the satellite imagery. You can find out more about the Environment Recovery Project by heading to their website. And if you want to learn more about the work of emerging Australian-based citizen science scholars, the best thing you can do is to join AXA's monthly early to mid-career researchers forum, which is um, up and running uh, thanks to support from the Theo Murphy Initiative and the Australian Academy of Science, and involves researchers from across Australia. Now, our first three case studies were mapped to Hackley's model of participation, but our final two are not mapped, but rather support and expand this model. And this example from the University of Western Australia is a rare example of the critical teaching of citizen science. So while we're seeing more citizen science being taught or as part of research on our campuses, we note that there are very few learning opportunities that challenge the nature of citizen science projects or critically evaluate their contribution to public engagement with science or which seek to interrogate the subject from a non-positivist mindset. This unit does just that. It was offered for the first time in 2020 to students who were either studying the Master of Science Communication or the Master of Biological Sciences. And some of these students had not previously studied science, which is also something a little bit different as citizen science is often um, embedded within science teaching. You can see that there are three key learning outcomes as outlined for this unit of study. And originally it was designed to include several opportunities for students to get involved with ongoing citizen science projects in their local area. However, last year restrictions due to COVID-19 um, meant that students were instead encouraged to participate in online citizen science projects. And the, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive, but students really wanted to have more interactions with people running citizen science projects in the years to come and that will be implemented in, in future years. Our final case study, number five, differs in that it is about connecting alumni through citizen science. And this comes from the University of Melbourne from a pilot that was started in September 2020 with a scoping survey to identify alumni citizen scientists and their work in addressing the sustainable development goals. 178 people responded from countries in both hemispheres and the projects um, ranged across climate risk mitigation through reforestation, water management, food security, renewable energy and poverty reduction, with many of the responses centred on climate change policy. And really, this project aimed to understand how can the University of Melbourne engage alumni citizen scientists to better equip current and future leaders amongst its alumni, staff and students with shared knowledge and skills um, in order to enable positive societal change through the Sustainable Development Goals. We hope that our chosen case studies from universities across Australia have shown the way that um, citizen science can be mapped to the learning trajectories of students in higher education and seek to serve folks who are not studying in our campuses, either alumni or members of the community, by increasing this porosity and encouraging students to think critically about citizen science and its many benefits for society.